Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm Justin with ExcelSmith. In this video, we'll see how to correctly sum values within filtered data. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Your boss comes to you and says something like, how many products did we sell on December 15th? To answer your boss's question, you pull up your sales data and do something like this. All right, my boss needs the total number of sales for December 15th. First things first, let's add the word total in cell C1. Next, I'll add the sum function in cell D1, passing in the range corresponding to quantity. My boss only asked for sales data for December 15th, so I'll add a filter using the keyboard shortcut I learned by watching ExcelSmith. Lastly, let's get rid of December 17th since my boss only asked for December 15th. Great, all that's left is to let my boss know. Let's send them a quick email. Hi boss, we sold 60,920 units on December 15th. Thanks, Justin. Uh-oh, something's not right. Did you spot the mistake? Let's take a closer look. Make sure to pay attention to the total value in cell D1. Did you see it that time? The total value didn't update as the data was filtered. This is because the sum function doesn't respect filtering data. We can double check this by selecting all of the quantity values and looking at the sum value in the lower right hand corner of the Excel window. If you don't see this sum option, right click anywhere in the bottom section of the Excel window and select sum. This value is different from what we calculated using the sum function because this sum only sums the visible values. In other words, it respects any filtering in our data. To double check, let's show only the values for product code ABC. Again, the sum function we created earlier stays fixed at 60,920. However, the sum value in the lower right has updated to 21,379 which is the total of product code ABC for December 15th. Earlier, I mentioned the sum function doesn't respect data filtering. This means that the sum function returns the total of the values passed into its parameter, regardless if they are visible or not. In the example from earlier in the video, it might have been difficult to see that the total doesn't correspond to the data because we were working with several rows with large-ish numbers. Let's build a quick example to more easily show what's going on. In this example, we have just two rows of data and each with a single digit value. Let's add a sum function like before. We'll pass in the range C4 through C5. The sum function returns the value three as we expect. However, filtering out item B, the sum function doesn't update. It continues to show the total for both A and B. Fortunately, there is a function that behaves the way we want. That function is subtotal. Let's hop back to our original data. I'll insert a row below the current total. In cell C2, let's add the heading subtotal to differentiate it from our previous total. We could have labeled this anything we'd like. In cell D2, let's enter an equal sign, the function name subtotal, and an open parentheses. Immediately after adding the open parentheses, we are presented with a long list of calculation options. It might look like a lot of different options, but this list really only contains two sets of the same calculation options. The first set is labeled with the numbers 1 through 11. The second set is labeled 101 through 111. The functions are the same between these two sets. The difference is that the calculations in the set 1 through 11 include hidden values in their calculations whereas the functions in the set 101 through 111 ignore hidden values in their calculations. Both sets work exactly the same when it comes to filtering, which is what we're doing here. It's always a good idea to plan ahead. If you want hidden values to be captured in your calculation, use the functions in the set 1 through 11. If you want hidden values to be ignored, use the set 101 through 111. For our example, we'll select option 9 for sum. Since we are filtering and not hiding rows, we could have used option 109. The result would be the same. Let's enter a comma to move to the second parameter of subtotal. This parameter takes the range of values on which we would like subtotal to perform its calculation, which in our example is summing. For this data set, we'll select the range D5 through D17. Let's enter a closing parentheses and press enter. Our subtotal returns the same value as our sum function, 
60,920. Not very exciting, huh? The magic happens when we filter our data. Going back to the boss's request, let's filter the transaction date to show only quantities for December 15th. We now see the difference between subtotal and sum. Like before, our sum function stays locked at 60,920. However, the subtotal function is calculating the sum of the visible values, which is the total 56,657. Let's double check our function's output by highlighting the cells containing the quantities and taking a look at the sum value in the lower right-hand corner. Awesome, they match. Let's add another filter and show only products ABC. Again, our subtotal function updates to show the total of the three visible rows. Sum is a great function, but it can get us in trouble like we saw in this video. Our data set was rather small, which means it's more likely we'd catch the mistake. However, it would be easy to miss the incorrect total if we were working with a larger data set. The safest bet to avoid potentially ending up in Excel jail is to use the subtotal function. If you found this video helpful, give those like and subscribe buttons a press. If you want to learn even more great Excel tips, check out this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.